Next we're going to talk about data collection, recording, and IVI calculations. Very important to record accurate data when you're in the field. Things that you need to record on your data sheet include your site name, the stream name, river mile, your date, uh, some description of your location. All of your species will be recorded as well as your counts, which are circled, and your weights, which are not circled. A lot of times you'll, you'll count and weigh groups of fish separately. They'll all go on the same line and be totaled later. Any voucher species collected, so if you didn't know what a fish was in the field, you would preserve it and voucher it and bring it home with you. Make sure that voucher is properly labeled with the date and the site and any other information. Delt anomalies. These are anything unusual about the fish that may indicate something about the stream section. These would all be recorded on your data sheet. These include deformities, erosions, lesions, and tumors. You might see a fish with an injury uh, where maybe a turtle bit the fish or a great blue heron bit the fish or it had previously been caught on a fishing pole. Those do not get recorded. Those are injuries. They're not anything indicating water quality. These delt anomalies are typically something related to the water quality more commonly seen in urban areas and very industrial areas. A lot of things happen after the field collection. You're not done with the site after you leave the site. There's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes. When you get back to the office, you want to make sure you organize and attempt to identify any fish that were vouchered. The sooner you can do this, the better. Fish lose coloration really quickly. Uh, the fish may start to deteriorate. It's a lot easier to see things on a vouchered specimen when it's still fresh. Organize your photos of fish and sites. You want to make sure you're recording the date and whatever site information is important. Organize and complete your field sheets. There's some things you might not know when you're in the field. Gradient, river codes, fins codes, add up all your numbers and weights for each site. It's really good to do this stuff as soon as you can when you get back from the site. If you wait till the end of the field season, there's probably going to be something on there that you've forgotten by now, and if you record it as soon as you get back, your data will be a lot better. I want to talk a little bit about the Index of Biotic Integrity, which is the fish metric that we use in Ohio. Uh, this system uses fish as indicators of water quality, and is based on 12 fish community variables. So we're looking at 12 different things about the fish to generate a score for each site. Using these 12 variables, we can compare the sampled site to a stream section that is undisturbed, unimpacted by pollution. The closer our site compares to the unimpacted site, the higher the score is going to be. Typically, with, with, this, with this method, the only thing different from your site to the site you're comparing it to will be a result from human development and disturbance. You want to be comparing similar drainage areas, similar habitat types. These are the 12 components that are included in the IBI. I'm not going to go through every one of them, but some are specifically related to species, species of sunfish, species of suckers, species of darters, some are related to their pollution tolerance. Are they tolerant to pollution or are they intolerant to pollution? What are they eating? Are they omnivores? Do they only eat insects? Do they eat other fish? Are they a top carnivore? Pioneering species. These are the species that are going to be there first in a very small headwater stream. And then your, your number of actual individual fish, number of different species, percent of delt anomalies. So these were the the irregularities, the erosions, the lesions, the tumors, deformities. Um, each variable will earn a score based on the comparison to the undisturbed site. A score of 5 means the variable is very close to the undisturbed site. A score of 1, our site does not match up with the undisturbed site at all. A score of 3 is somewhere in the middle. IBI scores can range from 12 to 60. 12 is the absolute lowest score you can get. Even if you got no, no fish at a site, it would still score a 12 because each metric would still get 1 as it does not approximate the undisturbed site at all. A score of 60 is the highest score you can get. Each metric would have scored a 5. 
which shows that it closely approximates the undisturbed site. Warm water habitat is typically around a 40. So if your site's scoring a 40, that's a really good assemblage of fish and macroinvertebrates. The modified index of well-being is another metric used to show fish species. Uh, the modified index of well-being is very similar to the IBI and uses a lot of the same components of the IBI, but it does not include the highly tolerant and non-native fish, so the ones that are very, very tolerant to pollution and the ones that are invasive species, they're thrown out. They're not used in this metric. Uh, it only includes the native fish and the, the more sensitive species. Also includes biomass. The IBI does not take into account the mass of the fish, only the, the counts of each fish. So this actually is, is, a, is an indicator of how healthy the fish population are as well as what is actually at the site. This is the conclusion of the data collection and IBI calculation.